In today's video, we'll look into the concept of analog to digital converters and why it's so useful in the microcontrollers. We are living in the analog world where all the signal is in analog signals. For example, the temperature, the noise level, the distance. And the computer we are using today is on the, it's on the other side, which is in a digital form. For analog signals, you could have any value continuously that in nature. And when it comes to the digital, you could only have either 0 or 1. Therefore, in order for our digital computer to interface with the analog signals that we found in our real world, we need to convert whatever analog signals that we have into the digitals and the tools that we are using is called analog to digital converters. So let's assume that you, if you have a temperature sensors, that gonna give us a temperature value of your room. And assuming if the temperature start from zero degrees Celsius, and your sensor can read up to hundred degree and convert the temperature into a voltage from five volt to zero volt. So the sensor itself is a device that convert whatever value you have in our variable into a voltage level. If you're going to measure our temperature from these sensors over the time, the value might be changing continuously. And in order for us to convert this analog voltage into digitals, the simplest thing we could do is by using an OM as a comparator. Two input from the OM, from the positive and negative input, if you fit the voltage that you measured from the temperature sensors into the positive input, and you have a reference voltage for the negative input, then your OM going to produce either 0 or 1, depends on whether positive is more than negative or the negative voltage is more than positive. So for instance, if you would like to set an alert to temperature be above 50, so we would like to connect this sensor to your microcontrollers and to send alert when the temperature has increased. If you look at the characteristic of our sensors, at 100 degrees Celsius, it's going to produce 5 volt, and at 0 degrees Celsius, it's going to produce 0 volt. And we assume that the temperature is going to increase linearly. So for example, at 100 degrees Celsius, you're going to get 5 volt. And in between 50 degrees Celsius, you will end up with 2.5 volt. Of course, this is not always the true because in nature, the sensor will not, not always find a linear relationship between these two parameters for any particular sensors. So in our case, if we want to set the alert at 50 degrees Celsius, the voltage we are looking at is 2.5 volt. If we put a 2.5 volt as the negative reference, and we have the positive input that fit form to our sensors, if the voltage you get from our sensors is below 2.5, if positive is less than negative, you will produce a zero output at the OM when your input voltage at the positive side is less than the reference of our 2.5 volt. When the temperature start to increase and it reach, it has exceeded the 50 degrees Celsius or in the voltage reference, it has exceeded the 2.5 volt. So the positive side will have higher voltage compared to the reference. Then the OM going to generate a one as the output. So when your V it's more than 2.5. As what we have learned in the previous video, how we can read the input from any GPIO for your microcontrollers, you can decide whether the value is above 50 degrees Celsius or less than 50 degrees Celsius by looking at the input state, whether it's zero or this is one. 
However, since this is a continuous signal, and the way how we handle the continuous signal is in the computer system is by using a sampling process. So at certain interval, your microcontroller going to sample or read the value from the sensors and send through the comparator and decide whether it's zero or one based on the voltage we found there. Interval between each samples or TS is called the sampling time. Or you could convert it into a frequency and we call this as a sampling frequency. In general rules of time, you want to have a higher sampling frequency or very short sampling time so that whatever signal that you try to record from the continuous signals, the higher the sampling frequency, the closer your digital sample going to represent the analog signals. If you take a look at this continuous signals, and this is the digital sampling that we took and fit into our microcontrollers, that's what we discussed just now. Assuming we would like to detect whether the voltage is more than 2.5 or less than 2.5, we could use a M or comparators. Then anything above 2.5, you will produce a 1 or digital value to your microcontrollers. Anything below 2.5, you will generate a 0 for your microcontrollers. So this has become a very simple analog to digital converters, although it only has one bit as the output, but you manage to tell whether the sensors or the output of your sensors, the voltage level is above 2.5 or is below 2.5. So if you look at this example, the first sample is below 2.5 and you should get zero at your microcontrollers. The second sample is above 2.5 and you're supposed to get one in your microcontroller and so on. By dividing the region into two, one and zero, might not be adequate for our application. For example, you might want to have a more precise control on your output rather than just two different states. Assuming that you might want to decide, do some decision, whenever the voltage is between 1.25 volt or is it somewhere above 3.75 volt when i have four different voltage level that i would like to differentiate one single bit might not be good enough at this moment so i might end up to use two different bits to represent the stage so in our case Anything between 0 watt to 1.25, I will produce 0, 0 for my microcontrollers. Anything between 1.25 to 2.5, I will produce 0, 1. So between 2.5 to 3.75, we will generate 1, 0. And lastly, anything between 3.75 to 5 volt, we can produce 1, 1 for the microcontrollers. In this case, if I have two separate bits to differentiate the voltage range between 0 to 5 into 4 region for my microcontroller to detect. So for example, in this case, for the first samples, I will get value 0, 1 into the microcontroller instead of 0 at the beginning when we only have one bit. The sample number 2 will have the value 1, 0 and the sample number 3 and 4 and so on. The more division that you make on the analog scales, the more precise the voltage going to be represent in the digital form compared to the actual value in the analog signals. And of course, the more precision that you would like to achieve in the analog voltage, the more bits that you need to represent that in the digital system. For example, in, in this case, if you would like to separate the voltage range into eight different regions, then we might need to have three bits to represent or to clearly separate each of the region 
with a unique binary value. The number of bits that you use to represent the analog voltage or analog value in the computer or microcontrollers is called the resolution. And if you know the resolution of a particular microcontrollers, or we can calculate how many steps that it actually try to divide the voltage range and how precise your ADC going to produce, how precise the result that your ADC produce is closely representing the analog voltage. So in this case, for example, I have two bits, so my resolution is two, so I can calculate two power of n, where n is your resolution, two power of two, and the result will be four. That's how we end up with four different regions that our ADC is trying to estimate the digital value that represent the analog voltage. So if you try to increase the number of bits or to increase the resolution into three, if I have a three bit analog to digital converters, so I will have eight different regions that we could use to have more precise estimation between the analog and the digital. So the words that we use to represent how many regions that we would like to separate the analog voltage is called the steps. If the number of steps is known to us, we could tell what is the precision that your ADC or your analog to digital converter had by dividing the maximum voltage or the range of the voltage that your ADC try to convert with the number of steps you try to divide. So for example, for two bits, uh, ADC 5 volt minus 0 because this is the range that we have, divide by 4, which, which is the total number of steps we try to separate our voltage range. And this is going to produce 1.25 volt for every steps. So it will start from 0, increase by 1.25, and increase to 2.5, increase to 3.75, and again, lastly, increase to 5 volt. So in the case of 3 bits resolution with the 8 number of steps, 5 divided by 0 because the voltage range never change, and divide by 8, we will end up with 0 0.625. As you could see, the higher the numbers of the steps we have, or the higher the number of the resolution for any ADC, the steps be getting smaller, and the smaller the voltage you have, the higher the precision your ADC going to generate. So the value we get from this stage is called the step size. For the embed module that we are using, in our class, it comes with the ADC module with a 12 bit resolution. And the input voltage range that the ADC is supported is start from 0 volt up to 3.3 volt. Let's say we have the number of bits, which is 12, so the total number of steps that our embed ADC could generate is to power of 12 or equals to 4096 steps and then we can calculate what would be the step size based on the range that we have so 3.3 .3 minus 0 divided by the number total number of steps 4096 and this will give us roughly 0 0.81 milliwatt for example, if you have a sensors that give you a range from 3.3 volt, start from 0 volt, the embed modules ADC going to separate the, the range of this voltage up to 4096 steps. And each of these small steps only increase by 0 0.1 milliwatt. For example, if you have a value produced by your sensor is 2.0 volt, and you need to read this analog voltage into the digital in using the ADC, basically the microcontrollers will try to increase 
the steps one by one start from zero and each steps gonna increase by 0 0.1 milliwatt up to a stage where the voltage is closely similar to 2.0 volt in the analog world and your ADC will stop then your microcontroller will try to calculate total number of steps that it needs to increase when the voltage level is similar to 2.0 volt we could calculate how many steps is required to increase from 0 to 2.0 volt and where each step is 0 0.1 milliwatts by calculating 2 divided by 0 0.81 milliwatt and you will get a roughly 2469.14 so what this value means that the microcontroller or the ADC would need 2469 steps and where each of the steps is 0 0.1 milliwatt in order to get roughly 2.0 watts in the microcontrollers and of course we can't have a floating point in our microcontrollers so the value will be approximately equivalent to 2.69 steps to get 2 watts so if I would like to convert the decimal number of steps into the binary so we will end up with a 12 bit values so since this is the 12 bit ADC you will get the maximum up to 12 bits values and the values that we can find inside the microcontrollers will be 1001, 1010 0, 0, and 0101 which is equivalent to number of counts or the steps it would take to reach 2.0 watts as what we read from our analog sensors this is the digital representation that we can find inside the microcontroller or the output of your ADC when we try to read the analog voltage of 2.0 volts. Since we have removed the floating point, so this might not be the exactly similar to 2.0 volts. This is and this is the error they introduced during the ADC conversion process. The error basically is depends on our step size. So the smaller the step size, the smaller the error that we're going to produce between the analog voltage and the digital value.